in this session i'll be discussing about the voltage amplifier experiment here when i'm taking the amplifiers whenever I, there is a need for me to have a better stability where the noise levels are very less distortion is very less and i want the more bandwidth at that and i would like to control the input impedance and the output impedance parameters then we'll be preferring a special case of an, an amplifier called as a feedback amplifiers this feedback will be in the negative form whenever the input signal is subtracted with the feedback signal then it is called as a negative feedback amplifiers with this we are having four different types called as voltage amplifier current amplifier transconductance amplifier and trans resistance amplifier here if the feedback signal is added with the input signal then it is called as a oscillator in this case we will be studying about an an negative feedback amplifier the first type is an an voltage amplifier coming to here i have considered an a two stage amplifier where i want a much higher gain value here but in this case i would like to subtract the output signal with an an input signal the output signal what i am going to consider will be called as an an feedback signal i need some feedback network also to provide this signal here in this case will be considering this is an an actual amplifier stage here now i would like to provide the feedback what do you mean by feedback anything moving from the output terminal to the input terminal so i have consider a network this is a second network this is called as a feedback network feedback network here is consider of a resistive type see this is the final output terminal from this the signal is carried with the help of a resistance to the emitter terminal of the first stage anyhow this re resistance will be providing the negative feedback the self itself so it will be moving once again to the input terminal of the first stage this is how the feedback mechanism will be considered as i have picked from here to in this manner this is how i am going to extract the voltage at the output terminal and i am going to combine this voltage signal once again with the input voltage there's a reason it is called as an voltage amplifier or else i can call it as a series shunt amplifier based upon the topology also as i have already said that we are having mainly five advantages it can reduce the noise it can reduce the distortion it can extend the bandwidth it can control the input and output parameters especially the impedance and it is providing the better stability the one problem in the negative feedback amplifier is that that uh, the gain will be dropped the gain will be dropped as the gain is already less in a single stage there's a reason i have considered in a two stage so that i'll be going to get a better gain and after the feedback though this gain will be reduced it will be a little bit optimum for the consideration but i'll be having the five different advantages as i have said already dropping of a gain will be not a big problem here stability of the circuit will be the more important for me here now coming to the case of this here i can do this experiment in two ways that is placing a feedback network and without placing the feedback network we need to check whether the gain is really dropping or not whether the bandwidth is really increasing or not to that case i'll be considering the two cases here the frequency response will be in this manner will be going to get a plot like this now let us see what happens if i am going to simulate in a multi sim simulator let me consider the circuit here the circuit has already been designed now this circuit is an nf voltage amplifier it is having a feedback through a resistors of 1 kilo 2.1 kilo ohm let me simulate this here i'll be going to get a frequency response i have simulated directly in the ac sweep two plots i have got one is a phase and one is a magnitude considering only magnitude i have got this response now see here carefully what is the maximum gain you have got it as 
you have got it as 26.3 db next going to the approximately 3 db down 26 minus 3 i am going to consider as 23 at 23 at 23 see note down this value if you want note down this value it will be better for the calculation 23.9 db i have got it as 15 hertz this i can consider as an nna lower cutoff frequency let me take on the higher frequency side also on the higher frequency side i am considering the same thing here i am moving at the 23.6 db the frequency try to note down it it is 25.1 megahertz so if i am going to calculate the bandwidth it will be 25.1 megahertz minus 15 hertz it will be giving me approximately some 25.0 megahertz try to remember this value let me do the same circuit without feedback see i am just removing the feedback loop I am just removing the feedback loop and I am going to calculate its bandwidth and its gain. Let me simulate this circuit too. Now this circuit is simulated. I have got the two responses. Let me calculate the gain. Gain how much it is? 58. Maximum gain is 58.0 dB. Previously, I have got it as 23 point, uh, sorry, I have got it as 26.3. See, 26 is far less than the 58. So, without feedback, the gain is 58. With feedback, the gain is 26.3 dB. So, the gain has been dropped. That's the confirm. Next, let us calculate the bandwidth also. If I am considering the bandwidth, if I am going to go at the 3 dB down, the lower cutoff, let me see at 55. So, how much the value have, you have got? 251.1 hertz. Try to remember this value. Next, let me move at the higher frequency side. At 55.1, I have got this as 230.9 kilohertz. See, the frequency, higher cutoff frequency itself is in kilohertz. At that case, I was having in the megahertz. With, before calculation itself, we can say that the bandwidth is very less here. If I am going to subtract, 630.9 kilohertz with the 251.1 hertz i'll be going to get approximately 2630 kilohertz the frequency uh, the, the bandwidth value is very very less in front of 25.0 megahertz which i have got in the previous case let me see what hope you have uh, note down the values again here Considering the values here, what you have got it as there, see, in case of with feedback, in case of with feedback, how much gain you have got it as? Maximum gain in the midband region is 26.3 dB. If I am going to remove the feedback network, then it is called as a without feedback network. How much the gain you have got it there as 58.0 dB. If you are comparing this, obviously I can say that the gain has been dropped. Yes or not? 26 is less than the 58.0 dB. Next, let me see the lower cutoff. I have already said that we will be calculating at 3 dB down. I have not plotted from the plot itself I have considered. At what dB you have seen at? 23.9 dB. Similarly, without feedback, you have seen as 25.1 Hz at 52.0 dB. Here, why you have considered 52.2 dB? Because 58 minus 3 is the 55 here. Next, higher cutoff, you have got it as 25.1 MHz at 23.6 db similarly the higher cutoff here is 630.9 at 55.1 db if you plot in the semi log and graph you will be having a small deviation so from this i can clearly say that 
the bandwidth with feedback if you are going to subtract 25.1 megahertz with the 15 hertz you will be going to get 25.0 megahertz similarly if you are going to subtract here 630.9 kilohertz yes or not 630.9 kilohertz with 25 hertz you will be going to get approximately 630.93 kilohertz if you are seeing here you are going to see that there is larger extension of the bandwidth because the bandwidth with feedback you are going to see a lot of change so this is an, an advantage of using a feedback amplifiers the negative feedback amplifier it is going to give me a better advantage the bandwidth has been increased to a larger extent though the gain has been dropped it's not an issue increment of the bandwidth and stability is a much more prior than this parameter hope you have understood the session